for today we will be going to Luke chapter 11 I went through that chapter and many of you know most of these things that is written here but one word one particular word caught my attention I will come to that later but Luke chapter 11 yes you know started with the disciple is coming to Jesus one of the things that Jesus did constantly was he spent more time doing this than any other. What do you think that is? Praying. Praying. Everywhere Jesus went, he was able to speak so eloquently, so clearly, so gracefully, so powerfully. He was able to present what is in him, what he is, and he was able to talk about where he came from, to whom he came from, so easily. And when he performed miracles and wonders and signs, he was able to do that. He didn't prepare, he didn't sit down, he didn't do anything. It was able to happen so quickly. Whoever came to him, they all got healed. All got delivered. All of those things happened very easily to Jesus but only one time one place that you see him in the word of God that is travailing agonizing which is when he prayed right in the garden of Gethsemane when he prayed as we can see his sweat became blood he was in so much agony you know, when somebody pierces you, it's easy for the blood to come out. Right? True? How many people ever had a cut on their hand? Or somewhere? Other than the little children sitting here, everybody experienced that. And what happens? When you have a prick in your hand or a cut in your leg, immediately the blood will come out. But, how many times, even when you're sitting and you're praying, that you get sweaty? How many people experience that? How many people experience that you were sitting and intensively praying and you, got, you began to sweat? Not many. Why is that? As we can see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane that he prayed and he says his sweat became like blood. Now not only not sweating but how many people experience something beyond that you began to bleed. <coughs> the intensity, the level of your prayer, the, the, the torment or the travail or the trial or the tribulation or the, the intensity that you feel when you pray made Jesus bleed. And when you think that you're praying enough, think again. That's the one of the reasons that disciples came to Jesus and asked them to teach us to pray. They didn't, they didn't ask him to teach, to do the miracles or any of that, as we know. But we can read all of that. And there was a short prayer that Luke writes it and continuing. But I want to start from verse 11 onwards. Luke 11, 11 onwards. It reads, now suppose one of your fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give a snake instead of a fish, will he? I don't think anybody that we know, we know that we won't do it. Anybody that you know would not even do that. Or if he ask for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Will he? If then, being evil, You know how much good gift to your children, how much more your father 
Heavenly Father give you Holy Spirit to those who ask. How much more your Heavenly Father will give Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. And verse 14 said, He was casting out a demon and it was mute. When the demon came out, the mute man spoke. Go with me to Mark chapter 5. We read about a deliverance ministry there. Jesus actually went over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and to this place called Gadarenes. When he approached there into the country, side of the sea into the country of Gadarenes, he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him, and he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore. As we know this story very well. No one was able to bind this guy because there was, as we know, demons. Jesus asked, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. Legion is the word that used by, in Roman military, Legion is considered to be a number 6,000, but here, end of this incident that we can see another number of 2,000. What are they? 2,000 pigs or swine. And here it says that the unclean spirit, here say word 7, shouting with a loud voice, and he said, what business do you have with each other, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, I implore you by God. Jesus once described Satan. He is a liar. Demons are a liar. Satan is their father. So he is the father of lies. But sometimes they do tell the truth. Here is one of the truth. He is saying... He, he said, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. That is the truth. Right? Sometimes they do tell the truth. Don't think they are always lying. Sometimes we take our time and we said, oh yeah, devil did that. And devil said, what? I have nothing to do with it. He did it himself. So here Jesus actually, we can see that come out, he said, come out of the unclean spirit and he was asking him, what is your name? He said, his name is Legion and for we are many and he began to implore him honesty not to send him out of the country. Here the demon is telling Jesus, begging him, do not send us out of this country. And what did Jesus do? There was nearby some swines was herding and he said, okay, Jesus go there. Hmm? Jesus the yeah. Demons asked. Jesus complied. Don't think that Jesus is only hearing your prayers. Anybody who comes to Jesus and asks certain things, he does. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here, somebody is coming, even the demons coming and asking straight to Jesus. Jesus implored and begged him, do not send us out of the country. Why was, why did Jesus sent 
these demons into the swan have a thought about it you know some of you sitting here probably know it is that area is covered by jewish people right it is according to jewish law they are not supposed to raise swine pigs they are not supposed to do anything to do with pigs here they are raising pigs that means they have completely no connection to god completely no connection to these people are away from god they are not thinking about god they are not thinking they are just living their daily lives and doing their daily thing whatever way they can make a living and here they even raising breaking every law of raising herd so when there is a violation of god's law demons will come into your business so they went into the swine and swine <coughs> went instead of going up the mountain normally these things who animals who graze they actually graze up the mountain but when these demons got into the swine and what in turn happened they couldn't control it so it, it actually was able to because they were on the side of the hill they lost control of themselves how they are standing they just ran down rolled down into the water they fell into the water and they drowned all 2000 of them so jesus actually told this man this man wanted to be who got delivered wanted to follow jesus when jesus got into the boat because the people of that land said to jesus don't stay here leave because they have nothing to do with god they didn't understand who this person was if jesus comes into our midst do we recognize last week i came prepared even with powerpoint <laughs> and uh, talk about i don't know how many people were here about do we care enough to help the people those who are around us that was the question right before i was standing the pastor came to me there is a man came and most of you saw mm -hmm. sitting in the back and i looked back a gentleman sitting in the back and he says he's asking for money help and i at the when pastor said immediately you know he said yeah we should then pastor i didn't say anything to pastor pastor said okay we, i he told them that he will do something we'll think about it after the church the man said i kept looking backward if he's still here still here but when i came up here to speak i couldn't speak and i asked the holy spirit and asked god i said god what are you doing you made me prepare you spoke to my heart made me prepare this thing and and even before i presented here we supposed to practice and he gave us and same thing some of the songs that were singing that day and back the message of the pastor it all fit into one one thing started out with the bible class at the end yes and i was thinking in the, in the in the middle we have to be very prudent when people come we cannot just throw the money to the swine or this thing that thing then even when i know all of us had that thought this is how holy spirit works this is i know each and every week we come together that is the work of the holy spirit is happening the guidance of the holy spirit the counsel of the holy spirit is happening in our midst <coughs> you are not here by accident amen you are be here because you are appointed to be here anybody who comes into this congregation they are appointed even just a visitor i believe that pastor believes that i praise god god working through us praise the lord hallelujah here the man 
wanted to go with Jesus but Jesus said you go into your own country and start preaching whatever that happened to you start proclaiming give your testimony to the people and he began preaching in the ten cities the couple is praise God hallelujah that we can see here in verse 14 in 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 Luke that Jesus is delivering a doing a ministry here and he was casting out a demon he was mute when the demon had gone out the mute man spoke and the crowds were amazed you know when people see things crowds were amazed you know a lot of people get influenced by demon even in Christian world in a possession of demonic forces into the believers it's very difficult but influence of demons what demon demonic forces influencing the believers is often happens if you think that doesn't happen I'll show it to you in the Bible Go with me to Acts chapter 5. There are two people mentioned there. Who are they? Acts chapter 5. Two people mentioned. Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira. And read uh, the words. Uh, 30, chapter 4 verse 32. Now the large group of those who believed were of one heart and mind. And no one said that any of his possessions was his own. But instead they held everything in common. See, this Ananias and Sapphira was among that group. Weren't they? Anybody doubt they were? Mm -hmm. They were not. They were. they were part of the group. But what happened later on? What happened later on that we see, and I think words 6 or 7. Now, when they, they, the, but the man named chapter uh, 5, verse 1 says, A man named Ananias with the, his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, kept some back, the price of him. And here, Peter is asking to, Peter said, verse 3, Ananias. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? See? They were Christians. They were followers of Christ. They were believers. But Satan filled their heart to lie. And Peter is asking them, wasn't the property yours even before you sold it? See, it happens. It even happened to Peter. We know this happens. The devil can influence people even when you are a believer. So if you allow a couple of months ago that we kids and all of us sitting together at home in the in a, in an evening, some of our family and the kids wanted to watch, and we put a, an old. Uh, CBS show called Gilligan's Island. Anybody heard of it? Gilligan's Islands have, uh, uh, I think it's six characters, right? In the whole cast, they were stuck in an island. You know, there is a, a hidden truth in the whole sitcom. It is showing the hell. You guys watched it ever? Thought about it? Here, they are stuck in an island and they cannot get out. They are always trying to get out, but they are stuck there. And it is, all characters represent seven deadly sins that happen to human beings. There is a man called Professor. He's very prideful of his knowledge that he has. Anytime there is something needed to be done, they run to him. There's somebody called Ginger. She is actually 
borderline nymphomaniac and etc. She's very proud how beautiful she is and how great. Then there is another one called Mary Ann. She's always so jealous of Mary Ann, how beautiful she is. Then there is another man called Howes, Mr. Howe. He, Danny, you never seen that? Gilligan child? He's looking at me very perplexed. <laughs> How he actually he's very much connected to his wealth and he does not want to give not even a penny away to anybody. And his wife never does lift a finger to do anything. She always says, oh, 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 she's always like that. Then there is the skipper. He always eating a lot. He's a big guy. He's eating a lot. At the same time, he's very much angry. He's, he's hitting Gilligan all the time. Gilligan is a young man. All of these six characters come with a lot of different ways. When somebody a boat lands there or something, they try to escape. But some folly that he, Gilligan does, they cannot escape. Because of his mischievous things that he does, they always get trapped in the island. So who is Gilligan? And Gilligan is always wearing a red shirt. So who does he represent? The devil himself, Satan himself. They went for a three hour pleasure trip cruise. The boat got lost, got stored up in a storm and ended up in this uncharted island. I am sure if you heard the song and the the beginning song you, you probably heard, this was going in the 70s, it was very popular. You know, grew up watching that. But that, this is the hidden truth behind it. And if you look at a lot of these things, there is hidden truth behind these kind of things that we are entertaining ourselves with. I was actually looking at the uh, 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 the internet uh, and I saw like 21 different kind of fears. People even fearful if their phone is not with them, what do they call it? Anybody know? Phobia. In a phobia, there is a special name for it. No more phobia. They are afraid their phone is losing charge <coughs> or they left it at home. They get perplexed and fearful about it. See, so these kind of things that is going on, everything there is a meaning. Don't think the things that you inadvertently or simply say, everything has a meaning. Everything represents something. Here that they say some people who are church courts being influenced by demon. And James chapter 4 verse 7 says, resist the devil and how do you resist the devil? This is the see, this is the same thing that we forget. The same word says how to resist it. James 4. Submit to me. Submit to God. Submit to God. It says, put up the next word, I think. Uh, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yes. How do you resist the devil? By submitting yourself to God. You can resist the devil. We miss that. Even devil made that popularized. Resist the devil. You can resist it. But people don't even know. Even church scores don't know how. We need to submit to God. When we submit to God. Devil you will be resisting devil all the time. You know how does devil influence the Christians? Is by thoughts. It's just like the things that we take the phone inadvertently and this thing, we read stuff and we understand stuff and we sticks in our mind but certain situation arises. Sometimes when we feel certain pain in our body, 
because we have the phone with our internet and what, what we immediately do? Go look it up. Okay, that says, okay, this is why the pain is there. This is why the pain is here. Oh, yeah, it, which can lead into, oh, cancer or amputation or this. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble. We never think about by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Instead of thinking that we run to go up to this world and we look and we understand and we become obedient to the world world rather than to the world. If you're feeling any kind of discomfort or pain by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. That should be coming right after you're feeling that pain immediately in your mind. Yes, yes, I'm feeling body, I'm feeling, I know you're giving me pain, but my contract with my God says I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. That's already written 2,000 years ago. We forget to tell ours of that. And we need to proclaim it. Not only we remember it. If you believe something, what are you supposed to do? Give power to Whatever knowledge that you have. How can you give power to the knowledge that you have? Speak. They believe, therefore they spoke. The Bible says it. Whatever words that you believe, whatever ideas that you get, only way you can bring it to practice by speaking it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, how else can you resist the devil? Ephesians chapter 6 says what? Put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God that we can resist. So, now verse 16 in Luke 11 says, we go back to the, my main chapter. Verse 16 says, Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. See, others tested him. Here, they didn't believe. The thing is, this is all happening at the same time, right? He just casted out a demon out of a person who was. What was the problem with that person? External problem. He was mute. He couldn't speak. He or she, whoever it is. And when he casted out the demon, what happened? He spoke. Isn't that a sign? Isn't that a miracle? But still, others try to test him by asking, what? Verse 15 said, cast out the demon. Verse 16 said, others to text him, they were demanding him a sign from heaven. Before that, there is another point that I wanted to make. Verse 15 says, what did verse 15? Can you put the 15? But some of them said, by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. See, this, is, this happens even in church circles. This happened to Jesus. This happened in church circles. Here is the accusation coming. He's doing a good thing, but people are accusing him. Accusing him. He's doing the things that he's supposed to do. Why did Son of Man came? He came to destroy the works of the devil. Demons are inside this, uh, this man and he made him mute. Here he's driving the demon out and he's able to speak. He's destroying the work of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil and we have to carry out the same work of, works of uh, our work of Jesus because Jesus Christ is in us. Amen. How many people believe Jesus is in you? Amen. Thank God at least five people believe. Only took one. The entire area of Decapolis was saved because one person got delivered from 6,000 demons. He went about and preaching what happened to him. So it only take one. I'm glad there is five here hallelujah. who lifted up their hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 10 said, We are God's masterpiece creating in Jesus Christ to do good works. You believe you are God's masterpiece? 
How many people believe that you are God's masterpiece? Yes. You believe it? Yes. Then you are created in Christ to do good works. If you didn't believe that, only five people believed it before, now you can surely believe. You are created in Christ to do good works. Isn't that what it says? For we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good work, which God prepared for us before. Already this plan is made. That's why you are planted in each of those areas, wherever you are living now. For this moment of time, you are planted in that area to do good works. To stand, how do you do good work? At in your basement or in your room, when you sit in there, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this area, in the name of Jesus, I command all the principality to leave. Your work is dead in this area. All of you began just confessing, and if you believe it, began talking. Amen. When you walk on the street, weather is going to break very quickly now. We had 70, 80 degrees last week, so you'll be taking your walks on your neighborhood. Start speaking when you're walking. Start speaking the things that you believe. Instead of putting stuff in your ear, always constantly walking around with earplugs in your ear. Instead of that, start speaking. Even if you're hearing the word of God, start speaking. It's easy for us to sing any rap or crap or, or other music or pop or rock or metals or anything. It's easy for us to hear some jingles for one time, we remember it. But start speaking the things that you believe from the word of God. You will transform your neighborhood. You will transform this area. God brought us for, for a season into this place. There are a lot of empty chairs. First week we talked about it. We need to go into this area. At least 10 block radius. We have to cover every single ho homes. This year. Hallelujah. How many people are with me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the four people who left it in your, your hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. You will be accused. When you get out there to do the good work, you will be accused. Hallelujah. Jesus here came and did some fantastic miracle and he was accused. You are casting out demon because you are the ruler of them. This is what happens when we do good things. When people are coming at you, accusing you. Bible says rejoice. 1 Peter 3.9 says do not repay evil for evil, but bless them. Romans 12, 19 says, God is telling us, vengeance is mine. You don't need to do anything. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Right? I will repay, says the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Word 16 says when people don't know, you know, word 16 they were looking for a sign. Right? We read that. 11.16 they were looking for a sign. Which people normally look for a sign? If you're going somewhere, now everybody has GPS, right? You put the address, you go according to what the GPS tell you if you don't know where you're going. That is a sign. Which people, those one thing, if you don't know where you're going, you look for a sign. If you don't, you don't know what you're doing, you look for a direction, instruction. If you don't know the person that you are encountering, you will find out about him or her. Where did they come from? Are they trustworthy? They are actually looking for the right thing. They are actually looking for the right thing. They wanted to know. They want a sign from heaven to say, uh, this is who he is. This is the Messiah. Valid thing. But here it says that Jesus, 
Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them. He began to answer. You know, even Moses asked for a sign. Asking for a sign sometimes is good. We see that in the Old Testament so many times. Doubting God is what's not good. Sometimes we need to ask signs. Here Jesus answering all are there. Another person who asks for a sign is who? One of the famous disciples. Thomas. Jesus came. He rose. Thomas said, I'm not going to. Until I see and touch him. Most of us came from there. That's why we are so doubtful people. Is that why? Even when we read the Bible, we don't believe it. Like Pastor was asking, who are the minor prophet? Some people think, I posted something on the Facebook just because I found it. Some people think minor prophets are the people, the short people who work in the quarries. <laughs> you know, if you didn't see what I posted on the Facebook, go read it. You know, 10 reasons, top 10 reasons that people are not reading the Bible often enough. It's pretty funny. I found it somewhere and I thought I'll post it. Here, Thomas actually uh, doubting. doubting when the prophet says his other disciples told him what happened. And he was doubting until Jesus came. And Jesus said, blessed are those who believed just by hearing. We are hearing Hallelujah. what God told us. You're not seeing much. But we do see miracles here and there. And we are seeing it. So verse 17, he's actually going and saying, and, and we are reading it. If Satan also divided himself against, how will he stand? And verse 19 says, If I, by birth support, cast out demon, by whom your sons cast them out, so they will be your judges. But if I cast out demon by the finger of God, anybody know what the finger of God is? What? The written word and spirit. Finger of God. It says in the Old Testament that it's the power of God. The power of God become powerful. How? I just said it before. If you believe something, if you wholeheartedly believe something, if you want to give power to that belief, all you need to do is what? <laughs> Speak. The reason why demons muting, making people deaf and dumb is they demons, devil don't want anybody to speak what people believe. He only want them to speak what he put there in their hearts. That's why a lot of people, when we get upset and angry, what do we do? We don't speak. And I we do this. I don't care what you say. In the corporate world, we say somebody sitting in front of you with their arms crossed, that means they are not going to hear anything what you say. That's a body sign saying, I'm closed. I'm closed for business. My eyes are closed. My ears are, you can do song and dance and all the things that you want, but I'm not hearing a word that you say. I'm not going to, even though it's like a child. It's like a child sitting in the class and he said, Little Johnny, the teacher said, Stand up. If you're not standing up, I'm going to punish you. And he said, Fear of punishing, he said, Stand up. And he said, In his heart, in my mind, I'm still sitting down. <laughs> this is our mindset. The mindset is when we get certain type of emotion comes into our heart, comes into our mind, we start speaking. When we start speaking, you are actually following what the devil wants. If you believe of the word of God and you begin to speak, you are giving power to the word of God. An architect 
actually nice, draws a nice blueprint. And they turned, put all the measurement. If the contract, the contractor don't know how to read the blueprint, what does he have to, how is he going to build the building? The architect need to explain the blueprint to the contract. That's why that we are building a building in the place I work. They often come, architect come, the engineer come, the contractor, and the people that you want is some of us sit in there to make sure is everything going according to the plan. Praise God, hallelujah. Here it says, all a kind of here saying that Jesus is talking about what? He's talking about the disunity that happens among people. Disunity brings chaos. If there is no unity, there will be chaos. Love is an emotion that brings unity. Anger divides. Crying separates. Hatred completely separate people, divides. Sadness, if I'm sitting very sad, if somebody has a love in their heart, they will come to me and ask, Rajan, what is going on? Do you want to speak, talk? But if the other person is also sad, what in turn happen? There will be complete separation. Verse continuing here, there verse twenty two. There's someone who was stronger than is talking about when the strong man fully fully armed guards his own house, his possessions is undisturbed. But when someone who is stronger than he attacks him, overpowers him, takes away from him all the armor and which he had relied, he will take away all the things that he has. And verse 23, he who is not with me against me and he who does not gather with me scatters. Verse 24. Can somebody read verse 24? When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, roams through unlit places, looking for rest and not finding rest, he then says, I will go back to my house where I came from. When an unclean spirit, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through what? waterless places. Anybody went through a waterless place? I know some people worked in waterless places. Right? How many people seen Middle East? I was looking at a picture of Gobi Desert which was taken completely dry. Sahara, completely dry. If you go to the land of the Middle East, you see waterless places. Completely dry places. And this is the word that struck me. Yesterday when I was reading this thing, says, I began to ponder waterless places. What is that? It says, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. He's going and going through waterless places seeking rest. He passes through waterless places. I went and immediately Instead of asking the Holy Spirit, usually what we do, was sitting in front of the computer, computer was on, I immediately began searching waterless places. Wasn't satisfied with the lot of things that I was reading. That there wasn't much there. Waterless places is something that we need to understand what it is. Devil 
goes through, passes through waterless places and seeking rest, finding, not finding any. Not finding any. He says to himself, I will return to the house which I came from. And when it comes, it finds his sweat and put in order. Then it goes and takes along seven spirits more evil than himself. Then go in and live there. The last state of the man become worse than the first. That's pretty much where I'm stopping. Waterless places. There is no water. If there is no water, there is no plants or any kind of food. Is it going to grow? No. If there is no plants or food or anything, there is no life there. Right? It is hot at daytime in those places and cold at night. It's inhabitable. Correct? There are violent storms in that area. When the wind comes, wind is coming very strong. And what it brings with it? Dust. Those people lived in Middle East and I've seen it on movies and things like that. Dust storms. It's worse than rain storms. Samson was sailing the other day that when the sandstorm happens, you know, it's hard itself, you're sweaty, and sand gets into... I don't like going to beaches that much because sand gets into every part of I it. And even when you go, come here, you, you're shaking things off. And I imagine, how does those people who live in those areas go through sandstorm? How do they get rid of that sand? It becomes so irritant. Little speck of sand gets into your shoe. I'm like always walking around shaking. So why did the demon want it to remember that what happened earlier in the gatherings? What did the demon want it to stay there? That was kind of a dry place. How did it become dry? Spiritually speaking. They were breaking. There is no word of God, but they were also they already broke the laws of God. They broke the laws of God, so there is no word of God. What in turn became that place became so dry. So the demons did not want to go. That's why they implored Jesus, do not cast us out from this country. Dry places means there is no life there. What does? It's a godless place. David said in chapter, uh, Psalms chapter 63 verse, and, Oh God, you are my God. I will earnestly seek you. My thirst sought for you. My flesh faints for you. As in the day, as in a dry and weary land. Desolate place. Sometimes our soul, our mind gets into these kind of situations. When we are feeling guilty in our mind, when we are separated from God, do not let devil's thoughts overtake your own word of God that is stored in your heart. Do not allow your body to become obedient to your mind. If you let your body become obedient to your mind, your mind is constantly filled with the worldly thoughts. What in turn happens? Your body will follow what your mind says. Your body never follow what the spirit says. Because what's in between? You saw pastor put three kids here. And I was telling pastor, it's amazing how you accidentally picked the sizes of the kids. Anybody remember? Who was the smallest? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And he told them, who was he? He was the spirit. <laughs> this is what happened. We need to make sure our spirit becomes stronger. So the spirit is constantly talking to our mind, putting ideas into your mind. Therefore, the world idea gets pushed out and the spiritual idea will be, become obedient by your body. Amen. 
Mind doesn't control the body. Mind tells the body what to do. Medical science are proving every cell in your body, meaning the cells on your toe, has the thinking capability. I asked cardiologists years ago when I started working on the floor, I saw a brain dead person. I said, how, how is his heart beating? They didn't have no idea. Yeah, they said it's a yeah, chemical process and all of that, but how does it know how to have that chemical process to take place in the body at that time? One of them finally confessed. That's we call the God factor. Oh, yes. <laughs> Completely brain dead. No electrical activity whatsoever in the brain. We thought the brain controls the whole entire body. Do not become obedient to the things of this world. When you hear, you cannot prevent hearing a lot of things of this world or seeing a lot of things of the world. But do not become obedient to that. Why? Because as soon as you hear or see, those things are stored in your mind. When you are sitting alone or by yourself or things, do not become obedient to that. But become obedient to your spirit. That's why we need to spend time. Anybody remember the movie Ten Commandments? The old one? Charles and Heston? Years ago people used to look for Charles and Heston in the Bible. They didn't get, people used to get frustrated. Why is his name is not written in the Bible? He is Moses! <laughs> If you think Hercules is one of the old prophet or patriarch in the Jewish, you are not reading your Bible. It's one of the things that they are. We need to spend time in the word of God. We need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time. It's very important. Very important. Studying the word of God and praying. Studying the word of God and praying. Jesus is the word of God and he prayed. And here comes the waterless places that we see that uh, this is a godless place that we see. What does waterless place mean? It's a place without water. What does water signify? Go to John chapter 7. I'm coming to an end, John chapter 7. Verse 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. And he cried out on the last day of what? Most important day of the festival. Most important. What festival are we talking about here? Go to Leviticus chapter 23. Can you put up verse 26, please? Lord began to spoke Moses, the next one. The tenth day of the seventh month, the day of the atonement. And I was reading this, I said, oh my. This is awesome. The tenth day of the seventh month, the day of the atonement. You know what the day of the atonement is. Your sin is what? Washed away. Sin is forgiven. And you have to hold that sacred assembly and practice self-denial, you are to present a fire offering to the Lord. And that's the one. On that particular day, you are not to do any work. Day of atonement. You cannot get your sin forgiven by doing any kind of work. If you think your work, doing good works, will forgive your sins that you committed before, no. That signifies doing work, you cannot get atonement, you cannot get forgiveness from God. You cannot do, that's what it says, you're not to do any work for the day of atonement, is to make atonement for yourself and before the Lord your God, verse 29. If any person does not practice self-denial on this particular day, he must be cut off from people. You must deny yourself. 
You must, if you want to follow Jesus, what are you supposed to do? Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Where did it come from? And some people don't even want to read the Old Testament anymore. It's old. It's not old. <laughs> we call it for the sake of reference is old. And must be cut off from the people. 30, verse 30. And I will destroy among his people anyone who does any work on this day. If you do any kind of work and thinking you can get forgiveness, you never get there. Therefore, you are condemned. Hell is your place. You will be ended up in hell. Next words. You are not to do any work. This is a permanent statue throughout your generation, wherever you live. This didn't, this is not old. It didn't pass away. Mm -hmm. Next words. And it will be Sabbath for you, complete rest for you, and you must practice self day. You are to observe, you are to observe Sabbath from the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening. Next. And the Lord spoke to Moses again, tell Israelis on the festival of booths, the Lord begins the 15th day of the 7th month. The 10th day was the day of atonement. Now the 15th day, 5 days later, starts what is the, what is the festival? Festival of booth. Anybody call, heard festival of tabernacle? Same thing. In Jewish it's called Sukkot. In Hebrew. And the seventh month continues for seven days. This festival is for seven days. Next words. Tell the Israelites the festival of seven days. And there to be a sacred assembly on the first day. You are not to do any daily work. First day. This is the first day of week. How many people doing their work? Today. Not to do any daily work. Next words. You are to present a fire offering to the Lord. Seventh day and the eighth day. You are to hold a sacred assembly and present a fire offering to the Lord. It is the solemn gathering. You are not to do any daily work. On the eighth day. From the first day. Which is following. We can call it following Sunday. Right? And the next words. The last words I want to read from here. 37. And these are the Lord's appointed and that you are to proclaim a sacred assembly presenting the fire offering to the Lord, burn offering and grain offering, sacrifice and drink offering, each of his designed for those particular day. This is the festival that Jesus is talking about on the last day, on the eighth day of the festival and Jesus is standing there and he stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty. Amen. See, this Eighth day is the greatest feast they are having. They have all the drinks they need. They have all the food they need. They have everything they need. They suppose they are living in that area. They are living in that booth. They are living in that area. They have everything. All the drinks and everything. And Jesus is standing like there. And crying out. If anyone is thirsty... What do you mean anyone is thirsty? Anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. That's one of the time Jesus asked, he became thirsty. <coughs> one time before this, one time after this, in John chapter 4, he needed a drink. He went to this well. And the well is deep. He asked this woman, please give me a drink. And didn't he say, how can you, who is being a Jew, ask me for a drink? And he said, okay, I will give you the living water and all of that. And then she said, how? The well is deep. How are you going to give a living water? We always have excuses in our midst. Oh, we cannot do this. It's cold outside. 
We look for things. That's a Samaritan woman looking for things. You cannot get the water, living water out because the well is deep. We look for obstacles because we don't want to do the stuff that we're supposed to do. It's easy for the mind to do the will of the world than the will of God. Will of God requires what? Getting out, making decisions, stepping out into the paths, walking. All of this requires kind of work. We don't want to do the will of God. It is easier to sit there not doing anything. The living water, Jesus said, brings eternal life. Praise God, hallelujah. Because lack of time, I'm going very quickly. And then Jesus, that this woman is asking, or Jacob, our father gave us this well. Who are you? Are you greater than our father, Jacob? At least he gave us a well. What have you given? Is Jesus in it? Is Jesus is greater in your life than anything? A lot of the songs we sang today, it's all fitting to these messages. I was amazed how Holy Spirit work. What is your priority today? Is your family, your job, Amen. is your thoughts, your temptation, is your tradition, is more of your priority? Bible says, your life, unbelief and tradition is what keeps you away from. Mark 7.13 says, you nullify the word of God by your traditions. You want to look at it? Mark 7.13 says, you revoke word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you, you do many other similar things. When the pastor said things appear and you don't follow through, you are nullifying the word of God over your life because you are holding on to the tradition rather than obeying the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here, the last word, where it's 14 in that Mark, uh, John chapter 5 says that eternal life. Jesus answers an eternal life. And John chapter 7 verse 38, he's as standing there says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will, will flow the rivers of living water. But he spoke of what? Verse 39. But he spoke of what? The living water that he spoke of what? He said this about the spirit whom those who believe in him were going to receive for the spirit of God. Spirit had not yet been received because Jesus not yet been glorified. So the living water, the water signified the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God. Waterless place means wherever there is no spirit of God. That's where the devil look. The devil always looking for the place where there is. Holy Spirit is not there. He will come and end. They swept the house clean. They put everything in order. But Holy Spirit wasn't there. And what in turn happened? The devil will go and get seven more demons. And come take residence there. It is important for us to walk by. You've been, we've been hearing this. This entire year, we need to walk. We need to walk in spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be led by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Holy Spirit comes in you, when Holy Spirit is inside you, Holy Spirit, what in turn happens? When you are standing here, when the songs are singing, when the music are playing, you won't be able to stand. You won't be able to stand. You begin to dance. You begin to move around. You begin to actually start to uh, uh, start to move around. And what will happen as Jesus cried out here? As Jesus cried out, uh, the reverse 
of living water begin to flow from you. Praise God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Okay, everybody up. Some huh? people jumped up. What's that? When you begin to sing by yourself, what this is how it is. God is looking up from the heaven and hears living water is coming out of you. And living water is coming out of you. Then a few other people join in. You begin to hear even more living water is coming out of you. Then what in turn happens when you begin to say more and more water, it becomes like a huge waterfall. Coming out of you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is seeing the living water flowing out. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is in you. And you will hear. And what is God is hearing? He's hearing the living water flowing out of you. Is there living water coming out of you? Is there living water coming out of all of us? Out of the belly of you will come out rivers of living water. We'll begin to hear when all of us come together, begin to sing and talk what we believe. The living water becomes. Amen. When you thunder, just like you'll be standing near the Niagara Falls. The thunder and what in turn happens? What in turn happens? If you ever been to Maiden Mist on the Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. how many people have been on? They give you overall. Why do they give you that? Why do they give you the overall? So, to prevent you being soaked. Mm -hmm. What in turn happens is, and you stand on your feet. What in turn happens is when the living water coming out of you, what will happen is God begin to bring down more living water upon you. His rain from the heaven, the blessing of heaven will come down. Praise God, hallelujah. The blessing of heaven will be coming down. 